Okay, this week I took part in the 7 day FPS game jam. Now you're probably wondering what that actually is. Well, you pretty much just make an FPS game in 7 days. I know, weird name. And yeah, I decided to make a game for it. But there's just one small problem. The jam's already finished. Or not it looks like. So apparently I have until the end of 2021 to finish a game. Just what they call the shared time frame has ended. In fact, according to the rules, well, there aren't really any rules. But I still really want to make an FPS in 7 days. So instead, I'm going to give myself 56 hours total to make this game. Now how did I come up with this? Well, 8 hours per day, over 7 days, is 56 hours total. Yeah, smart, I know. But anyway, I'm gonna get to work. So, do you remember this video? Well, for those of you that didn't watch it, I basically tried to make an FPS game where you only have one bullet. And after about a month, I had a working prototype, but the game just wasn't that fun, so I stopped working on it. But I still liked the idea, so I was considering using that idea for this jam, but decided against it. Instead, I decided I wanted to do some kind of 2D in 3D game. And by that, I made a game like Doom where 2D sprites make up a 3D world. And I also wanted zombies, because not gonna lie, zombies are pretty cool. Yeah, if you like zombies, you should hit like right now, and even if you don't like zombies, you should hit like because it helps support this channel so I can make more bad videos like this. Anyway, I decided to get working. I started by making a Trello board with literally everything I needed to accomplish during this jam. And by everything, I mean I pretty much wrote my code inside of the Trello board. Yeah, I'll take it easy on the planning next time. Next, I went into Photoshop and drew this 32 by 32 pistol. It's not great, but you can kind of tell what it is, so I'm keeping it. Then I made this grass texture in Photoshop using a noise filter. And after slapping everything into Unity, it doesn't look bad, actually. A really big part of FPS games is the movement, so I decided to work on that next. Now, when it comes to stuff like this, I normally use rigid body-based movement. But for the sake of time, I based my movement around the character controller component. I then created a sort of modular input system and made it work with the movement. My reasoning for this is so that I can basically reuse scripts for the player and the enemies without writing a lot more code. I then wrote a script that would billboard sprites towards the camera because Unity doesn't have built-in functionality for that. Billboarding basically means the sprites just face towards the camera, so it kind of looks like the sprites are in 3D. You can see how I did this in the GitHub repository, which is linked in the description. Yeah. Next, I went into Photoshop and drew this muzzle flash, and it looks pretty good, I think. I then slapped it into Unity and did some animation, and now we have a really cool muzzle flash. Next, I hopped back into Photoshop and drew this zombie and made a little animation for it. I then slapped everything in Unity, did some programming, made some animations, and now the enemy will follow the player and when it gets shot, it will play a little hurt animation. Yeah, very cool. Now, do you remember that video I talked about earlier? Well, in it, I talked about this little two camera trick I used to make sure my weapons wouldn't clip through walls and stuff. It works okay, but when it comes to post-processing and stuff like that, multiple cameras is a big no-no. But luckily for me, I'm not using that bad standard render pipeline. I'm instead using the universal render pipeline, which supports these things called custom renderer features. And Unity's automatically included this one called render objects. Basically, what I'm doing is checking if an object is behind another and if it is, just disregard it and render it on top anyway. This is way more intuitive than that two camera trick most devs are used to. So I mean, if you're doing something like this, I would honestly give Universal Render Pipeline a go. Anyway, that's enough boring stuff for now, so let's get back to the game. Because I'm not really good at pixel art or animations, I didn't really want to make some more animations for the zombies attack. So instead, I made this slash thing and got it into Unity. And with the help of a simple script I wrote, when the zombie is close enough to the player, the slash animation will get layered on top of the zombie's normal a walking animation. This looks pretty good and saved me so much time. Then I really quickly went into Photoshop and redrew the crosshair because not gonna lie, it was looking pretty bad. Then I decided to work on something that the game was really lacking. That's of course a map. Now I've pretty much got four options to do this. One, I can hire someone to do it for me, but that's not worth it because this is a game jam and I'm broke. The second option is to make it in Blender, but I've never made a map in Blender before and I'm kind of short on time. So that's probably out of the question. The third option is to use Pro Builder and just make it all in Unity. And the fourth option is to use Unity's terrain system. There's plenty of resources for that online, and it's really easy to make organic looking maps with it. So, I installed the terrain tools package from the package manager, and started following this really cool tutorial, link in the description. And after a while, I had this really cool organic looking map done. Okay, so this map looks pretty good, but it's looking kind of empty. So I drew a tree in Photoshop, and then spent a couple hours meticulously placing every single tree in the world. This was incredibly boring, and I almost wish I had done 
it through code. Anyway, with the trees all in the scene, it looks really good in my opinion. Next, in Photoshop, I made this damage overlay thing for the player, and then made it fade in and out when the player was hurt, and it looks really cool. After that, I realized that the player had no clue how much health they had. And I mean, I could just show them with numbers, but that's boring. So instead, I drew this health bar in Photoshop, then slapped it into Unity, and using sliders and stuff, I got a health bar working. Now this works, but it looks kind of bad when the health bar just like snaps. So I added some lines to my health bar script, and now it's not ugly. Sick. Oh wow, would you look at the clock? It just so happens to be time for me to make some sounds. So I opened up this program called BFXR and went crazy with it. Then I reused this sound manager script that I made for another game, and now we have sounds. Okay, so my first ever game jam was the GMTK 2020 game jam. And in it, I made this little top-down shooter. Now, what does this have to do with my current game? Well, I got some feedback that you could pretty much sit in the corner and enemies would only be attacking you from two sides. This is because my map had, like, boundaries around it. So to combat this in my current game, I'm still going to have boundaries, but enemies will be able to spawn outside of them. And you, as the player, can't cross them. Alright, so everybody knows survival games need some kind of wave system. And I've been putting this off for a while because... Well, I have no clue how to do it, but I've pretty much got three options. Option A is to make some kind of algorithm that will make waves for me. Option B is to make every single wave myself. And the last option is to do a little mix of both. The first option honestly looked like the least work, so I decided to go with that one. So I did some programming and now it doesn't work at all. Yay. Apparently my script is trying to spawn zombies at position infinity, infinity, infinity. And I have literally no clue why. Alright, so either I don't know how to use this function or it doesn't work properly. Probably the first one. But instead of trying to find a random point in the nav mesh for the enemies to spawn, I'm literally just going to find a random point and raycast down and spawn the zombie there. This works as long as I know that I'm not trying to spawn the zombie on a place without ground. And everything between the min and max positions I'm spawning zombies in has ground. So yeah, it works. Now that I have the basic loop done, I want to take some time to add some more enemies. So I started by adding a bunch of stuff to the Trello board. Then I went into Photoshop and drew a skeleton, rock, ghost, sphere, and and this weird monster thing. Wow, that monster was pretty weird, but you know what else is weird? The fact that you're not subscribed, you should like do it now. Next, I got the skeleton to like throw rocks at you, which is pretty cool. Then I made it so that the ghost would follow you and shoot you with those spheres that I drew earlier. I was also really inspired by the ghasts from Minecraft. So I made it so that the player could shoot the ghost bullets and they would rebound right back at them. I also made it so that you couldn't just shoot the ghost because, you know, balancing. Finally, I made the monster thing and this was inspired by an enemy from Salmon Run in Splatoon. Basically, it goes to the player's position and then comes out and eats them. Okay, so now that I have multiple enemies, it's gonna be hard to make all of the waves procedural. So instead, I'm gonna go with option C that I mentioned earlier, which in my case is going to be creating 10 or so waves manually and then procedurally generating the rest. So I rewrote most of the wave spawning script and now it works pretty well. If you wanna know more about how I did this, feel free to just ask me in the comments or you can check out my GitHub repository, link in the description. Now, because the game just keeps getting harder and harder procedurally, there comes a point where waves are just impossible for the player to beat. So I realized that there also needed to be a way for the player to get better. As a result, I went to Photoshop and drew a health power-up, a speed power-up, and an ammo power-up. The health power-up refills the player's health, the speed power-up makes them faster, and the ammo power-up increases their max ammo. I then wrote a singular power-up script that would work for all of them just because I was lazy. I then wrote a script that would spawn them all over the map, kind of similar to the one I did for spawning enemies. And with that, we pretty much have a completed game. All that's left is some small things like menus and other UI. I started by creating this little wave indicator that would show you which wave you were on when a new wave started. I then made this pause menu which, let's say, had a certain attitude towards you pausing the game. I then made a menu appear when you died and it also had a certain attitude about it. Next up was the main menu which I got done pretty quickly along with some scene transitions and stuff. Finally, I had to make the tutorial which was really just a help menu because tutorials take too long. I started by drawing these arrows in Photoshop so that the player could navigate through the menus. Then, I made all the help menus which, let's say, were very helpful.
And with that, the game was pretty much finished. Well, except for the music, so I decided to get to that next. I've been learning how to use FL Studio for the past couple months so that I can make music for my games. In fact, a few weeks ago, I made a video about how I made a Christmas song, so you should like watch it. But anyway, I made this little short one minute loop and it sounds pretty good. And now the game's completely finished. I'm very happy with what I made in 56 hours and I learned a lot. If you wanna play it, you can check it out on my itch.io page, link in the description. Unfortunately, there's no web build, but there are Mac, Windows, and Linux builds. All of them are tested except Linux, so if you experience any issues, please let me know. And yeah, hit like if you like, also hit like if you dislike, and please subscribe. And yeah, have a great day.